I'd love to throw her in the mix. Right. Have Lorraine try to harness her. It's lovely to talk to you both. I've got to say, the things you guys did to me in this movie, I'm just about recovering. Oh, good. <laughs> I imagine audiences' reactions to these films are kind of just as entertaining as movies. Have you ever been tempted to sneak into a cinema and just see everyone's reactions and see how frightened they get? That was actually part of the marketing strategy for Conjuring 1, and that, that was a brilliant marketing strategy. They, they, they did sneak in the cameras. And um, and they and they turned the camera on the audience, and they and they sewed up um, you know a little little previews about it. And yeah, but you hear it, you hear it during the premieres. You hear I say even if I'm with my husband, it's like they get him all the time. He gets the tears in his eyes too. This one, this one, I was so surprised when my husband watched it alongside with me. I look over it, and his like his eyes are damp, you know. And it's it's not only the scares, but Honestly, the, the, it is, it's an, you know, it's emotional, this one. Tugs at the heartstrings. Yeah. Um, the Conjuring universe is a very scary place, as I say. If you could splice any of the characters you've played before into the Conjuring universe to see how they'd cope, which one do you think you'd put in there? <laughs> oh, God. I, would, I would probably take some someone really ridiculous and um, stupid. I probably would take... Uh, actually, this guy, right? Where is he? Right, right there from that movie Stretch. He was such a dodo. Um, uh, <laughs> and this other guy I played named Barry Monday was such a doofus. Probably Barry Monday. I'd like to see Barry in a in a in a horror movie. <laughs> It'd be funny, at least to me. I'd love to see that happen. I'd also love to see Ocean Master in one of them. Ah, uh, he basically is. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make this happen. I would surely bring Norma Bates into the equation for sure. She's like in many ways just the opposite of Lorraine Warren. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to throw her in the mix. Right. Have Lorraine try to harness her. You okay there? Jesus. I think I hurt someone. This is Ed Warren here with Lorraine. All right, let's get started. Residents of Brookfield were shocked this afternoon by the broad daylight murder of Bruno Sauls. The court accepts the existence of God every time a witness swears to tell the truth. I think it's about time they accept the existence of the devil. I really have to pluck up the courage to watch horror films because I'm so bad with them. Do you remember what the first horror movie you ever saw was? I wasn't allowed to watch them growing up, so I had to sneak it at Missy Burner's house. And so she she showed me, uh, the, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street. And so Freddy was the first sort of villain I had to cope with in a horror film. And it plagued me for years. Did they always do the best ones. The knives at night. Yeah, the walls. Yeah. My my first experience was uh, was in the seventies. Was the the TV version of Salem's Lot? Um, that freaked me out because the brother floating and scratching on the window, and it terrified me as a kid. Terrified, terrified. Me. And um, and then I remember being eighteen, and when you and when like Blockbuster was a huge thing, right? And um, and you go, let's go rent a movie. And my friends wanted to rent Salem's Lot. And I was like, you guys, it's the scariest movie ever. No way. Terrify me as a kid. Can't do it. And they're like, ah, we're going to do it for Halloween. So that's how my friends talk. Uh, <laughs> so, we, um, so we got it. And I and I was so prepared to be horrified. Uh, but of course, you know, that's at 17 and the, the effects were not what they uh, what they were in the 70s. So I was like, oh, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. But my first experience, I was just absolutely terrified. Actually, that. I take that back, Olivia. You can rewind it back even further to The Wizard of Oz. When that house lands on the witch's feet and then the flying monkeys in the end, they terrified me. Oh, that's a good, yeah, they that's a good terrified thing. me. I had dreams at night about flying monkeys. It's funny, even films like that, which aren't obviously horror films, there are things that you pick up on as a kid and they just really frighten you, just silly little things. Because kids don't know that they're not supposed, that's not supposed to be a, 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 a horror, you know, like we know 
okay, this is a horror movie, so now I'm going to be scared. They don't. They're just seeing an image, right? So, it, so it's it's yeah, that's a that's a great point. Most of the things that terrify my kids in movies are not set up like that's a horror movie. I mean, I'm terrified of pigeons. They're not traditionally something in horror films, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that one. Not oh. my favorite. Not my favorite. I'm so glad I found someone that also agrees. I discovered that in Romania, at uh, yeah, in in one of the squares in Romania. Four o'clock, they would descend. All the pigeons would descend, and my my daughter was like, she was ten months old and just learning how to walk on cobblestones, and they would just like come down upon us. I'm not a pigeon fan either. My worst nightmare. Well, huge yes. congrats, guys, on the film, and such a pleasure chatting to you both. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. <laughs>